This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com It's my honor to give you some ideas which you could use every day of your life. It's a wonderful thing coming to school and if you hear something it could change your life for the rest of your life. I'll give you an example. Every day in davening, you say Shema Nasrei. So every day in Shema Nasrei, you say in the first bracha, Baruch Ato Hashem, Morgain Avraham. Blessed are you Hashem, or you're the source of blessing Hashem, who is the shield of Avraham. But you could have in mind that, well, when did Hashem shield Avraham? Oh! When he protected him, when Nimrod put him into the Kifshan Eish. And when else? Well, when he, he went to rescue Lot and he fought four big kings with huge armies. So there now, for the rest of your life, your Mogen Avram just got better. Because now when you say Mogen Avram, you could have a mind that it was protected from the furnace of fire. And not only that, but you don't have to worry that you'll forget it because every day you'll remember it in your Shema Nesra. And that's the way it is with so many of the things that we learn about in school. If we stop to program them into our lives, we'll have much more meaningful lives. And that's, that's only the beginning. Because for all of you, Be'ezus Hashem, it sounds far away now. But one day there will be little eyes looking up at you and saying, Mommy, why are we doing this? And some of you will say, Oh, I wish I listened better in school. You'll have to ask your daddy. Right? So you want to make use of every minute. And not only that, it says, Loi habayshin lamad. One who is embarrassed doesn't learn. You have great teachers. Use them. If you want to know something, ask. You shouldn't be ashamed to ask. Right? Loi habayshin lamad. Somebody that's ashamed can't learn. And you know, the Mishnah says in Pirkei Avos, "Dam alahoshiv lapikayrus." Know what to answer to the non-believer, to the heretic, to the one that doesn't believe. So Rav Miller used to say, "What do you mean? Why should you know? You shouldn't have anything to do with a non-believer. Leave that to the pros, to the experts." And Rav Miller said, "What it means is." is know to, what to answer to the non-believer in your head, the whispering voice inside your head that's whispering questions. You could ask those questions. Ask them to your teachers. And sometimes your teacher won't know the answer either. That's okay. Your teacher will ask her teacher. Your teacher will ask somebody with more experience. But you're here to learn. And you're here to know how to do mitzvahs in a much better way. Much better way. Well, let, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. You see your, your mother lighting candles before Shabbos. Do you know why she lights the candles before Shabbos? One of the reasons is, is because Shabbos remembers the creation of the world. And what was the first thing created when Hashem created the world? By Yom let there be light. So she sets the tone. Now we are remembering creation that starts with Yehiyar. Of course, she does much more than that. She's making a magnificent statement at the beginning of a Shabbos that as mommy... And as wife, she wants to fill her home with light. She wants to fill her home with warmth. Right? So you're learning, you're learning how to do mitzvahs. 
And you have to learn that about all the mitzvahs that you're going to do so that you won't do it. The biggest problem that we have is that people don't get excited about mitzvahs because they do it without feeling. They do it like robots. Ki mitzvahs anoshim milimuda. They do it almost out of habit. And that's no good. You know, if, if you go to your friend's bas mitzvah and you're in the middle of talking to somebody and you say, I'm mazel tov, you're not even paying attention. That doesn't make your friend feel good. Your friend wants a real heart ziga mazel tov from your heart. That's how Hashem wants us to do mitzvahs. Hashem wants us to do mitzvahs from the heart. Now, you have a special mitzvah. And it's a mitzvah that's given to women, just like to men. And that's the mitzvah, I'm going to surprise you. The mitzvah of mezuzah. It doesn't sound so exciting. Yeah, thanks a lot. We move into a house. We're in the house for 50 years. So one time in 50 years, I have a mitzvah to put on mezuzah, which I didn't put on, my father put on. That's my mitzvah. The mitzvah of mezuzah is a mitzvah every time you pass a door. You have to train yourself for this mitzvah. It's not an easy mitzvah to do. You see, the mitzvah has a message. The message of the mitzvah, you know, used to be, I don't know if they have it in Florida. Are there Parker pens in Florida? No. The Parker pen was a certain type of pen. Your teachers probably know Parker pens. No, no not even, no. Yeah, right, you know Parker pen. But anyway, it, the Parker pen had a, a little arrow. And everybody knew it was a Parker pen because of the arrow. You know, the, the more men than women know about cars. Cars have certain emblems. There's a Cadillac emblem and a Lexus emblem, right? There's different emblems, right? You heard of those cars? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to see the word Cadillac and you don't have to see the word Lexus. You just recognize the emblem. It, it sends out a message. The mezuzah also sends out a message. You have to train yourself to hear it. The message is, is that Hashem is in the room and He's watching you. That's the message. And that message, if you, every time you pass the mezuzah, you remember that, it'll change the way you behave. Ah, Hashem is watching me. Ooh, Hashem is watching me. Hashem is in the room. That's why the mezuzah has on it the Shin Dalad Yud, Shakai, which stands for Shemer Dal Sois Yisrael. He guards the doorways of Yisrael. Right? That's what Uncle said to convert some of the Roman legions. He said, who stands and protects whom? So they said, we protect the king. We stand outside and protect the king. He says, but by us... Hashem stands outside and protects us. That's the mezuzah. But the mezuzah is for us to think. But you have to think. You have to stop to think. And it's that way with all the mitzvahs that we do. Right? You keep Shabbos. So what do you think about on Shabbos? Which dress I'm going to wear? Am I going to go to shul? I'm not in the mood of getting dressed up and everything. Right? Am I going to go to my friend's house? I hope there's going to be something good to eat. Those are Shabbos sticker thoughts. Do you think that's what Shabbos is about? Mm-hmm. Shabbos is about putting a, putting a spoon of chalent in your mouth and celebrating that the world didn't come about from a big bang it wasn't always here, but it was created in six days and Hashem rested on the seventh. That's what Shabbos is about. And if you go through 50 Shabbos and you didn't think that once, so then you're falling very short on what a Bas Yisrael is supposed to be. You're not doing the mitzvahs with a feel. 
I'm going to tell you a secret. One day, you're all going to be wonderful mommies. It's not so far away. It's all in it's Hashem. Be'ezras Hashem. But I don't like to say im yitz Hashem, if Hashem wants. Hashem wants you all to be wonderful mommies. Be'ezras Hashem. Right? With the help of Hashem. With the help of Hashem, you're going to want to give something over to your children successfully. Now, how do you do that? So the recipe you say in Kriyashma every day. These words which I commanded to you on your heart, you'll teach your children. You have to be heartfelt, heartsick, sincere about something, then you could give it to other people. That's why many parents... Many mothers make great shoppers out of their children. Children learn how to love shopping from their mothers. You know why? Because you see, mommy loves to shop. Oh, we're going to the mall today. We're going to have a nice time. So if mommy has a gleam in her eyes, she's going to make you a great... That's why a lot of fathers pass on to their children to love baseball. Because they talk about Mickey Mantle and they talk about ah, and they have such an excitement, so it goes on to the children. If you learn to get excited about mitzvahs and you're passionate about mitzvahs, then you're going to pass it on to your children. You know, as it gets hot outside, and it's not so hot now, you know. But for me, coming from 18, year, 18 degree weather, even this is hot. But as it gets hotter, as it gets warmer, and you continue to dress with sneers, then you stamp yourself as a Torah Jew. And as such, you have a walking opportunity at every moment to make a Kiddush Hashem. One of the highest mitzvahs in the Torah is v'nikdashti, is to sanctify Hashem's name. When you walk around dressed modestly, and then when there's a guy in target that only has two items ahead of you, uh, in, fr- in back of you, and you say you could go ahead, you only have two items. Whoa! You made a Kiddush Hashem. A Kiddush Hashem. When there's an older Goyish woman, it could be a Yiddish woman too, there's a Kiddush Hashem, a Yiddish woman, but carrying two heavy bags. And you say, excuse me, you're going to the corner, can I help you? You're making a Kiddush Hashem. When you're in the post office and you're ordering some stamps and when you finish, you say, have a nice day. A lot of people don't say have a nice day. They're, they're, they stood online. They're, they're anxious to get out. They don't even say thank you. But you stop to say have a nice day. You're making a Kiddush Hashem. You should be able, if you are on the lookout, you should be able to make a Kiddush Hashem many times a day. And by the way, that we also say in Kriyashma. You should love Hashem, your God. And the the Gemara tells us, how do we love God? Can't hug God. How do we love God? Can't kiss God. How do we do it? So it says, "Shetehei shem shamayim mis ahev al yodecha," that the name of heaven should be loved through you. That people should say, "You know, uh, these girls are different. They're different. I don't hear them using foul language. 
I see them talking respectfully with their parents. You have to realize that you're always being watched. You're always being watched. And that's why, especially in the street, you should be so careful how you talk to your mother, to your father. We know that by us, Kibbut of Aim is one of the most imp- at your stage of life now. Kibbut of Aim is one of your most important challenges. One of the most important. As life goes on, challenges change. Goes from your parents, then you'll have a husband, then you'll have children. Then you'll have a mother-in-law, a father-in-law, right? Then one day you'll have grandchildren, right? It keeps on going. And it, it changes. Right now, you could put all your attention on your parents. And, 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 and the Torah tells us that there's real great reward in store for those that are good to their parents. Laman yarichun yamecho, laman yitavlo. I'm going to tell you a story. I think it was worthwhile for me to fly from New York to Florida just to tell all you wonderful girls this story. There was a family in... There was a family in... uh, in New York, the Edelman family. And... They lost their mother at the age of 98. It's a nice old age. I had heard that her sister passed away the year before at the age of 98. And there's a third sister that's alive that's coming close to that age as well. So I asked the family... Did anybody ask them in what merit they thought that they enjoyed such longevity, such long life? In the Gemara, the Gemara has often that when somebody lived a long life, they would ask So the family told me that they did ask these three sisters and they all gave the same answer. And I'm going to share it with you. These three sisters grew up in the early 1900s during the Great Depression. The Great Depression, you might have learned about it in school. It was in America. There was very, money was very hard to come by. There were soup lines. And their father had a grocery. And in those days, they used to deliver the milk 3.30 3.30 in the morning, the milk came, I don't know if even if any of your teachers remember this, but the milk came in glass bottles and it was put in wooden crates. And they would get about eight crates of glass bottles in wooden crates and the crates were extremely heavy. Their father had a very bad back and he would groan the whole day from lifting those cases. These three girls, they were teenagers. They were teenagers, like 13, 14, 15. They made a pact amongst themselves that they would set their alarm clock for 3.20 every morning, and two of them would wake up, and because one couldn't do it, two of them would wake up and carry in the eight boxes so that their father shouldn't have to do it. And they did this in the snow, in the ice. They never went away to camp because they did it in the summer, in the hot summer. And they did it all their teenage years. They got up 3.20 in the morning and carried in the eight cases so that their father, whose back was breaking, would not have to do it. And they all three said that they're sure that they lived till 98 because of this merit of Kibbut Aim. Now, Kibbut Aim comes in many shapes and forms. It doesn't have to come in milk bottles. 
it could come in a girl being smart enough to not wait to be asked to do something. Now you might say, I do keep it up. Whatever my mother and father ask me, I do. But okay, but that's not a smart yeshiva girl. You're keeping the mitzvahs. It's nice. But a smart yeshiva girl would go home and say, Ma, I have a little time. Can I help you with something? And offer something. No, when you do have time. And if you are excited about getting the blessings, you'll make time. You'll find the time. Something is exciting enough, you make the time. But imagine you're not even waiting to be asked. You say to your father, you know, you know, Daddy, Abba, Tati, you know, I know you're so tired, and I know you wanted to clean your desk. Can I help you? Don't do it without asking. Don't touch your father's desk without asking. But, but can I help you with something? Do you, know, do you know what reward there is in store for that? Do you know how special that is? And that's taking your yeshiva education and using it. I want to give you a, a, a drill on how you can put mezuzah power to use. Remember, mezuzah power is a big thing. You want to live long, right? Everybody wants to live long. In order that you should live long. How do you get yourself, we're so busy, how do you get yourself to think about the mezuzah? How do you get to do that? I'll give you a hint. Once a day. No, I'm not asking more than once a day. Once a day when you have time. Maybe when you're going into your bedroom. Take your hand, put it on the mezuzah, and hold it there for ten seconds. Ten whole seconds. I know it's going to be very hard for you to find that time. But hold it there for ten seconds. That's going to force you to think for 10 seconds. Hashem is watching me when I go into the room. Now, if you do that drill once a day, then even when you don't hold on the mezuzah, you're going to start getting that message from the mezuzah. And then when you're about to fight with your sister, you'll say, Hashem is not going to be proud of me. He's watching me. You go into the kitchen and you're about to eat without making a bracha, right? Or even if you make a bracha, I don't, know if you, I don't know if they do this in Florida, but some places they make a bracha like this. You ever hear that kind of bracha? They swallow the bracha. That's not, you're supposed to eat the food, not the bracha, right? If you have a mezuzah, the mezuzah will train you how to, the Hashem is watching me. That's not the way to behave when Hashem is watching me. Now, I'm sure that all of you have heard the famous mission in the beginning of Perkeavos, Al Shloisha Dvarim Ha'olam Oimed, Ala Torah, Vala Voida, Vala Gemil, Torah. That's a no-brainer. Avoda is davening. And gemil is chasad and kindness. What's so special about this mission? We all know this. Ramila used to say that it's telling us that just like Torah you have to do every day and just like you have to daven every day you have to do a kindness every day. A lot of people say, yeah, if somebody needs something, you know, somebody's lonely, I'll go visit them. Somebody's sick, I'll go to the hospital and visit them. Yeah, if somebody needs it. It could go 10 days where nobody needs anything. So then I don't do a kindness. <coughs> Says Ramila, no, 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 no. You have to do kindness every day. You have to be on the lookout to do a kindness every day. You know, like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Kindness a day. 
Ramili used to say, uh uh-uh, uh, it's the end of the day, you didn't do a kindness, find a bar of soap and put it in the show bathroom. Find something to do. Now, of course, if you're at home and you could help out, it's not hard to find a kindness a day. I mean, you don't have to be an Einstein to figure out how you could do a kindness in the day, straighten something out, put something away, right? Help prepare supper, you know, do homework with a younger sibling. There's so many different things that you could do. But look to do, remember, olam chesed yiman. Now I want to give you one final parting piece of advice for that. And that is, as Jews, we know that there are two worlds. That's why we, we say, when we want to wish somebody life, we say, L'chayim. Right? We don't say lachai, but shouldn't it be lachai to life? We say lachayim. It's plural. Why? Why? Because we know it's lives. We know it's this world and the next world. That's why we don't call a cemetery a place of death. We call it a base hachayim. You know that the Hebrew word for a grave, kever, is the same letters as boker. Mm-hmm. Kever and Boker are the same because really the grave is a mourning in a new world. Right? There's a new world. And the next world is the main world. <laughs> Olam Azeh, this world, Domel le Prozdor, is only a hallway, Lifnei Olam Haba, to the next world. Right? It's only a corridor, it's only a hallway. You need to train yourself, if you train yourself at this age, now, to always be putting away investments for the next world. You help somebody with their homework that they don't understand, you're investing for the next world. You call your friend who's not feeling well to wish her well and say, I miss you, even though you're really not so close or even though you really don't have time. You're investing for the next world. You come home and say, Mommy, how, I, how can I help you? You're investing for the next world. You took the three steps forward by Shemana Esrei and you were about to daydream and you shake yourself and say, No, I'm talking to Hashem and you concentrate. You're investing for the next world. You're nice to your English teacher. Oh, well, here's an interesting idea. You ever, I mean, you're going to school a long time already. Did you ever say to your English teacher, you know, I really learned something new today that I didn't know. You ever once do that? Your English teacher, you won't believe it, but your English teacher is a person and has feelings too. And you can make your English teacher feel good. Whether the English teacher is a guy or a yid, it makes no difference. I, I lost my wife recently. My wife passed away. And many goyim came to the funeral. Goyim. Because... My wife was nice to whoever she saw. She used to bring down drinks to the garbage collectors in the summer when it was very hot, and telling them that they standing out in the heat the whole day. They must be thirsty. She used to leave a muffin in the mailbox, wishing the mailman a happy day. And when the guy in the Angizu of Staten Island had to set up 1,200, 1,500 chairs for her funeral, and it was actually December 24th, right before his holiday, so we went to thank him. He said, for the woman with the shopping cart, my wife used to walk with the shopping cart, he said, I would have came in for my holiday, and I would have done it for free. She always said hello to me. She wanted to know how my family was. You have to know that you have an opportunity at every moment to make a Kiddush Hashem 
to show that a Jew is special, that we're the Am Segula, we're the treasured nation. We're supposed to be an example for the nations. The nations are supposed to learn from us. I remember that uh, I play paddleball. And uh, I'm a rather uh, good player. And in a certain colony in the mountains, they needed a fourth player. They asked me if I would come. And it wasn't a religious colony. And I played there for several weeks. And one time I come in and this very, very not religious woman comes and accosts me. Are you the rabbi? And I thought she was going to tell me to beat it, to scram. And I said, yes. She said, oh, I have to thank you so much. Never met her before in my life. Uh, I said, uh, for what? She said, well, my husband and I were thinking of selling our unit because it's next to the parable court. And we couldn't tank, take the profanity, the bad words that they were using while they were playing. But since you came, they stopped using those words. And that's how you could impact on people. I told them simply, I didn't tell them that they shouldn't talk that way. I would like to tell a guy. But I told them that if you talk that way, I can't play with you because then, then I'll get used to talking that way. So they stopped talking that way. That's the way you can impact always, wherever you are. And, and you carry that privilege and that responsibility. So I give you a blessing that you should be able to do your mitzvahs always thinking, why am I doing this? If you don't know, if you don't know, ask your teachers. But why am I doing this? And let me daven, thinking what the words mean. It doesn't make sense to stand before Hashem and go... <laughs> sound like a drill. Right? You're not a drill. Right? You're saying things. So think about what you're saying. And I'll give you a very big tip. Your davening makes a difference. If you're down well, you're going to have a better life. A lot of people don't put that much effort because they don't think, ah, eh, Davin, Shem's busy. He's not, he's not listening to a little girl in Florida in Boca Raton. You know, he's busy with big stuff. Kikel Shemat, Philus, Kopa, Amcha Yisrael. Hashem listens to every prayer. You Davin well, your davening is going to make your life better. So Davin well. Do keep it of aim. What a, what, a, what, a, what a privilege that you have now to do keep it of aim. Take it for all, all you can. It'll make your life so much better. And, and be walking Kiddush Hashem. You could all do it. And that Merit Hashem should bless you all with happiness, Simcha Sachayim, good friends, good health, and everything wonderful. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.